Welcome back, it's me Lou. And today we are going to draw this guy. The Predator. Okay, so this is the very popular science fiction character known as the Predator. And it's really, really, really cool. I love the Predator. Um, growing up around the Chicagoland area, um, it seems like in the late 90s, every Saturday afternoon around 3 p.m., Fox Channel 32 would always show The Predator in the afternoon, and I loved it. <laughs> I couldn't get enough of it. They always showed The Predator. If it's a Saturday afternoon and you live near Chicago, chances are on Channel 32, The Predator would be on TV, and I'd love The Predator. It's one of my favorite science fiction movies. This is one of my favorite movies in general. Um, I don't know. Everything about the characters is such a cool concept. I mean... I think in terms of this cinema, modern monster mythos, I think characters like the Predator and the Alien, those are kind of my generation's, you know, equivalent of like the creature from the Black Lagoon or Frankenstein. You know, th this is my generation of monster characters. So yeah, we're gonna draw the Predator. Um, I love, I draw the Predator a lot, and I love drawing the Predator without the mask because. The Predator has a crazy looking face. So yeah, I'm just going to just focus on something like this. Just the face. I love the Predator. It's awesome. It's such a cool looking creature. He has, he's like humanoid. He's probably about, you know, seven feet tall. He has very like, I don't know, maybe like semi-aquatic features. He has this crab looking face. See, so he pressed the top of his head and his mouth opens. You know, he comes with cool science fiction, like, shoulder-mounted lasers. He has these almost, like, Wolverine-inspired gauntlets with these sharp claws. On his one forearm, he has his communication array thing where he, like, I don't know, do all his doodads and set off his bomb. And he has his cool mask. So, yeah, we're going to try the Predator. I love the Predator. Love him, love him, love him. All right, let's get to it. All right, let's... Okay. So, when I draw the Predator, I, I, I kind of take liberties with, with his face. Um, I grew up reading the different Predator comics put out by Dark Horse. And it seems like every now and then some artists would kind of deliver their own interpretation of what the Predator looked like. But he's always kind of the same. He always has those, um, he has a big upper cranium and he has those like, almost like dreadlock looking kind of things. And he has this really rigid brow. He has these animalistic looking eyes. I think they almost look like cat eyes. Let me take a look at the figure real quick. No, oh, maybe not. Okay. <laughs> I don't know, but I like drawing the Predator. So it's like I said, I take, I kind of take liberties with how I, I draw them. Well, I'm going to give my Predator a couple more teeth than this one has. I love characters with fangs, sharp teeth. Uh, the Predator definitely has... He has all the cool things I love about drawing. You know, it's a very large, larger-than-life, muscular-looking kind of creature. It leaves, it leaves so much to the imagination in terms of, you know, what, what, what are these guys all about? You know, they come from space... You know, apparently their backstory is they've been visiting Earth for like centuries. And they like the thrill of the hunt.
Yeah, so I'm gonna take a couple of liberties with mine. I mean, when it's when it's all said and done, you'll still be able to tell us the predator. I just wanna change him up just a little because I've drawn him so much, you know, throughout my life. So as of this recording, this is uh, March 2001, and it was announced I think sometime last year that Marvel Comics acquired the rights to do the Predator comics. Which makes sense because um, Marvel owns 20... They're owned by... What is it? They're owned by Disney and then Disney owns Marvel and Disney also owns 20th Century Fox, which I believe is the... Uh, they own the rights to the Predator. So it's just a matter of time that they took away the comic book rights from Dark Horse, which is sad because I love the Dark Horse comics. I think they did such a great job over the... I don't know... 20 maybe 30 plus years that they had the predator um license for comic books i mean there were so many wonderful stories and for me kind of it kind of bums me out it's kind of like when uh, marvel got the star wars license i mean they used to produce great comics marvel but it's almost kind of like a reset and you kind of all the i don't know almost 30 years of fiction that was established by dark horse kind of gets you know swept under the rug and becomes forgotten But it'd be cool, though, if they honored, um, you know, maybe some of the stories and came up with new, some new fiction that was based off the stories from a long time ago. As much as I love the Predator, I hate drawing those crazy... He has so many of those dreadlock things that it takes forever to just draw them and color them in. But I'm not coloring it in. We're just keeping this black and white. But it's going to take a while just to ink it. All right, I know I'm going to draw the head. I'm not sure how much of the shoulders and upper body I'm going to draw yet because I kind of want to... Um, I don't want to get too carried away and overboard with this drawing, which is easy to do because he's such a detailed character. All right, so there's his head. Um, let's clean this up a little. <clears throat> okay, so I'm gonna kind of go in. This is gonna. This might be a little bit more rougher drawing than what I normally do. Uh, just because I'm gonna work off very loose pencil lines. As you can see here, it's not very well defined yet. It's just kind of like just blocking in all the shapes. <clears throat> So, uh, let's, I really want to ground where his head is, so we'll work on that first. Just get his eyes figured out. Alright, so I'm drawing the, uh, kind of has this ridge slash brow line that goes around the top of his head. And let's get his eyes in. Once I get the eyes in, I'll be able to figure out what the character's gonna kind of like, um, you know, it's gonna give me a little bit more in terms of his personality and it'll dictate the rest of the drawing for me. All 
right. So I can kind of see his eyes now. Let's get his teeth in. So I'm, the way I'm going to operate is I'm going to focus on this part of his face and then work my way out. Once I have a better idea of his personality through his face, and then that'll help, that'll help me figure out what you know what I want to do with the rest of them. One of the crazy things about the Predator is that you know I think the first movie came out what was it late eighties, mid eighties, maybe like I want to say. <clears throat> I want to say maybe 87 or 88, was it? And to this day, you could go to like a, a Walmart or Target and they actually still sell, you know, this just says something about the popularity of the character. They still sell Predator toys, which is nuts. You know, the, the character is so popular that in the year 2021, they still make toys for a property that, you know, it's the height of its... You know, it was I don't know the height of its popularity was, you know, way back when. But the fact that so many years later, after the movie came out, you can still just go out to a store and buy an action figure of the Predator. It's so mind-boggling. And what's even crazier is that when you know back in the '90s they released a toy line, Kenner did for um, Predator, and it was an R-rated movie, <laughs> which is it's like, it's like, hey, here you go, kids. Here's a here's a Predator action figure. Yeah, the movies is great. I I just love the, the the story of the original film, even the sequels and uh, the expanded movies with uh, Aliens vs Predator. I know those don't get the greatest reviews, but man, I love those movies. Anytime I get to see any of those characters and together, th that's for me is like it's like Christmas. I just love the Predator. The comic books are cool too because they've expanded on the fact that, you know, they've made the character seem more than uh, a one-dimensional like intergalactic space hunter. You know, in certain comic books, in certain stories, the Predator had to form alliances with humans. Um, you know, sometimes it could be a, very, a, a, char a character that that embodies honor. You know, it's just not a, a ruthless you know monster or killer. And I like stories like that. I like stuff where things are a lot more complicated and stuff, you know, they breathe a lot of depth and character into something instead of making it so one-dimensional. Because it's very easy to take this this character and to say, hey, we're going to make a story about this crazed intergalactic killer that just runs around amok and just kills everybody in sight. You know, it's, it's cool when people take the time out to develop stories and give motivations behind something and you see that the character is uh, layered with lots, of, lots and lots of depth. You know, just because it's a science fiction monster doesn't mean it's, it's going to be absent of traits that make it interesting. Alright, the mouth's going to be kind of tricky because I don't want to get the too much detail into the mouth because I'm kind of worried that if I do I'm gonna lose the teeth but we'll see All right, so I'll fix this in a minute. I kind of had to lay out where everything's going to go.
Okay, um, I'm going to come in here and I might work a little bit backwards and I'm actually going to add some of the finer details in the face just so that I can make more sense of it and it'll help me. It'll give me a little bit more of a guide of how I want this drawing to shape out. Yeah, so this is the part that's going to worry me is the detailing the inside of the mouth. It's like if I don't do it right, I lose the teeth. and But at the same time, it's kind of like I don't want to... I don't want to, like, underdo it. Because my goal here is to kind of create depth. I want to show that the mouth kind of goes back. So I'm going to try to create some sense of shadows inside the mouth, which is going to be kind of tricky for me. So the situation like this, this is where trying to figure out line weight is going to play an important role. All right, so if I want to break this up, I'm going to add some, say add a little bit of shading on the inside of the mouth. Okay, this is going to work. Yeah, so the Predator, it's one of my favorite characters. Uh, when I was younger in high school, I got this one magazine. It was I forgot what it was called. I still have it on me. It was, uh, it was, the magazine was about modeling, like model kits and stuff, like styrene model kits, garage kits, resin kits. And... Um, they, sh they showcased some custom Predator model kits from Japan. And I was like, man, that's so cool. But they're from Japan, so you couldn't, you know, you couldn't get them here. And then I'm like, you know what? I want to make my own Predator model kit. So at the time, I'd, I had to find a large enough model kit to use as a base. And I figured I'd just, like, sculpt around it and add bits and pieces so it looked like the Predator. And then I found a... I believe it was a Horizon Models Silver Silver Surfer model kit. And Silver Surfer, he's such a base looking character because it's basically just a naked dude. And then I sculpted around it all of the Predator's armor and his dreadlocks. And I converted this Silver Surfer model kit into a Predator figure. And it looked amazing. I kind of wish I still had it. I think I threw it out years ago because I think it might have broke or something. Um, maybe if I find a time... If I can find another model kit, maybe I'll make a Predator kit from scratch again. But it's it was just cool to have, you know, because I think they didn't. I don't think the Predator action figures were even out at the time when I made it. But it's like I said, nowadays it's nuts. You could go friggin' Walmart or Target and in twenty twenty one buy a Predator action figure, which is crazy. Everything about the character is just perfect to me. The character design, you know, the, the story. You know, it's a race of intergalactic, like, safari hunters. And they have a certain code they go by. And from what I remember, the books I read, like, uh, the Predator, I think it won't attack a defenseless being. It, hunt, it hunt, mostly hunts praise that it deems worthy. And, I mean, they don't necessarily fight fair to begin with. It's because, you know, they're outfitted with all this crazy, like, sci-fi stuff like laser guns and nets and, gaunt like, razor-bladed gauntlets and stuff. Oh, one cool thing. I, I remember I loved the character so much that in high school, um, in one of my classes, I think it was, like, I think it was English. Uh, we had to come up, I think we were studying at the time, like, Greek mythology. And our instructor wanted us to come up with, you know, for us to develop our own, like, myth that explains certain things. Like, I think the whole lesson was we learned certain stories in mythology, like, um, you know, certain Greek mythological stories would explain why the sky is blue or, you know, why certain things are the way that they are. 
And then my story was, I wanted to do a story that explained why the dinosaurs were extinct. So, um, I forgot which Greek goddess it was, like the goddess, Greek goddess of like creation. She, she came up with like, in my story came up with the, the dinosaurs and, you know, she invented the, the dinosaurs and they roamed the earth and she, you know, they were kind of like her babies and her pets. And I want to say, I think, um, in my story, maybe like another Greek god, maybe like Ares or something, since he was a god of war, you know, he he created the predator and he brought the predators to earth and then they hunted the dinosaurs to extinction. And I remember my <laughs> my English teacher, he loved this story. I got like an A on the project. You know, besides just writing the story, I even created like artwork for it. Just, that just gave me an excuse to draw the predator. Yeah, that was high school. All right, so the predator has these little like stubbly, I don't know, like spike kind of things protruding from his head. And I'm just going to add a couple of them just randomly. All right. And then let's, this cranium, let's give it some sort of... I'm not sure if you're seeing if the teeth are popping out enough at you. Okay, it's, this seems to be working a little. All right. Okay, so the predator on his head and on his flesh. I'm not sure if it's a, like this on a toy. In addition to having these, like here's his flesh tone. He has kind of like these darker markings that surround his head. And they're just kind of randomly placed in certain areas. So I'm just going to just do that, that real quick. So I'm just marking off where on his head I want those, those kind of like spotty patterns. And then I'll come back and add a little um, tone to it. Yeah, for me, you're, you're not going to get any cooler than the Predator. The Predator is, like, for me, the epitome of, like, perfect monster science fiction design. It's one of those things where I kind of wish the movies did better than what they did. Because they, they come out every so often, but then I think review-wise and box office-wise, they don't really, they always kind of underperform. And I really think if they got the right people to do it, that understood the property and the mythos and the characters more and the fan base, they'd be able to produce a product that's just amazing. But I'm still happy to get what I get. You know, and the fact that I still get Predator movies in this day and age, I'm really happy about that. I just kind of wish they were more in line with stuff that people would deem worthy of being like a blockbuster or something.
I don't want to get too carried away here because it's for me right now. It's really easy just to like keep on going on forever and just drawing more and more detail on them. But I got to remember that, you know, I got to keep this drawing somewhat reasonable and not get t too ahead of myself or get carried away. Yeah, for me drawing this character right now, this is a real labor of love. I love drawing this character so much. In a perfect world, I'd love to have a job where all I did was draw like Wolverine, Venom, and the Predator all day, and the Hulk. Those are always my favorite go-to characters. They're so larger than life. They have so much expression and, you know, physically each one has such exaggerated features. Like, if I had to draw Superman, I would, I would dread that. I, Superman's one of those characters that you have to get perfect, in my opinion. It's, he's so iconic, and there's so many things that... There's so many expectations expectations visually when you look at the character. He has to hit all the right marks. You know, you need the chin has to be right. The cape has to be drawn, drawn just right. You can't really take too many liberties, because if you do, then it it loses something in the character. Whereas something like the Predator, you know, any kind of liberty to take with it and, exa and to exaggerate in certain things, it just makes the character that much cooler. Like, if you make his fangs bigger, it's going to be cooler. If it makes his dreadlocks longer, it's going to be cooler. This is a character, too, that's been, I mean, he, he's been copied so many times in, like, science fiction and, like, God, there's so many bad movies, bad science fiction movies where they take a very similar pre premise and even the character designs and they'll just totally bite the Predator and just do knockoff versions of it. I'm going to finish adding all these weird look like textured patterns around his head. And then I think I want to start uh, fleshing out the shadows a little bit more before I get to his dreadlocks. Okay, there's that. Okay, let's start. Um, how do I want to handle this? Okay, I, got, I want to start rendering out his face to give the shadows a little bit more depth, and there's going to be some push and pull here. But my big worry is that some of these textures are always starting to like look very similar. Like this, the amount of contrast and value here is really closely matching what's going on up there. So I might have to change up the line weight a little um, with my shadows. Yeah, let's just experiment a little, see what I could do.
All right, this is kind of working for me. I remember in high school, like I was kind of, that's kind of, I mean, even to this day, I'm, I'm very much a nerd, but I was, I, I wasn't like a nerd in high school where I got bullied or anything like that. I was kind of like one of the weird kind of nerds where everyone kind of just kind of respected me. Cause I guess, I don't know, I had, I had like, I guess good nerd cred. Like, um, I used to draw a lot and it, it was one of those drawing for me. was like one of those things that broke the barrier between me and like some of the popular kids, like in like in normal circumstances, I don't think I'd always get along, you know, very real world kind of things. I don't think some of the people like the jocks and stuff would have gotten along with me, but you know, the fact that they'd see something cool, like, you know, they'd see me drawing the predator and that's something they can relate to. Cause dude, everyone loves a predator. Like, dude, you're drawing the predator. I'm like, yeah. And then it's, it's kind of fun because it'd almost be like a icebreaker sort of deal. And it'd be kind of my, my drawing would be my way of um, me getting to know people outside of my usual crowd. Because it is, I don't know, I think there's a certain commonality if you with certain things. And if you can find a way to like break those certain barriers, you can find out that you have a lot more in common with people than you, than you think. All right, so this is working out. All right, I'm happy with this. All right, so I'm happy with this part. I got to start working on the top part of his head. I'm not sure if though if you're drawing enough attention to the eyes. That's what's bothering me. I'm not sure. If I'd if I was working with color, I could draw more attention to the eyes. But I'm really worried here that all this detail I'm losing the eyes a little. So I gotta I want to want to pull focus on the eyes again. So when I think to do that, I'm gonna kind of fiddle with the lighting a little and where your eyes are gonna be drawn. So I'm gonna start pulling in. It, the light sourcing doesn't make sense, but I'm going to start pulling the lighting here to draw your eye, eye so it's going to start looking at this, where the eyes are at. Okay, Predator. Yeah, I'm dreading. Oh man, it's gonna take forever to. These dreadlock things—they look cool, but they take forever to draw because there's so many of them. And I think there's there's not really a good way I could go about and cheat and just kind of fill it in. But I'm not looking forward to it. Okay, we got that done. There's his face. I forgot what the the if you're a fan of the comic books and the fiction, you know what the the real technical term for this breed of alien is. It's like I want to say it's like Yajuta. I, I can't. I don't, I don't know. So the aliens they're known as the xenomorphs, and the uh, I think the predators like the Yajuta, if I'm if I'm pronouncing that correctly. I never pronounce it correctly, so <laughs> okay. So let's draw these these thingamabobs on his head.
All right, so he's some of his dreads they have these caps on the end of them, and then there's even some that have these like I don't know what they are. They're like it's almost like ornaments or jewelry around it. And I'm gonna add those to some of these. And for me, this is where the drawing gets really, really sketchy because I didn't plan out a whole lot right now. So it's going to be very easy for me to make a mistake. So I'm hoping I don't. All right, I don't want to get too carried away, so I think this looks all right for now. And let's figure out this side of the drawing. So earlier today, um, I drew this other alien for the YouTube. It's, I think it was like called Fred the Alien. And it was me being very lazy because it's a Sunday. No, it's a Monday. It's a, See, that's where my mind is at. It's a Monday today, and I didn't feel like really drawing anything. But I kind of knew I had to put out a drawing video because it's been a while since I've done one. And I drew this really half-assed <laughs> alien-looking dude, which is based off of the, um, the aliens that people always say abduct them, the gray aliens. And... I felt so disappointed in myself after I finished that drawing and ended the video. I'm like, I'm like, damn it, I'm not that lazy. But then I just felt so bad. I'm like, I got to redeem myself. I'm like, okay, let's just figure out something cool to draw. So then here we are, we're drawing the Predator. So hopefully this makes up for that really lazy drawing I did. Because I don't want to go down that route where it's just like, oh my god, I'm just doing all this, these half-assed drawings that don't mean squat. Alright, I'm going to cheat here because this these dreads don't plug that close to his face, but I don't want to mess up his face any further, so I'm just going to attach him straight to his, uh, really close to his face, and it'll still look okay, it'll, it'll make sense, but I don't want to get too complicated with this drawing because it's already looking kind of nuts. Last year around this time, I got really big into um, this hunting down old Predator action figures by Kenner. And I kind of amassed a small little collection, and I was very happy with that. They made some really cool toys in the 90s. Toys and action figures. Trying to make sure I'm, everything's making sense to me. Let's add one more here. Yeah, this is going to be a nightmare later. Once I try to figure out um, where I'm going to start rendering out these dreadlock tentacle looking things and. Uh, how detailed I want to get with them, it's going to be a nightmare.
there's so much overlapping going on and it's so easy to like this mess up and kind of lose your place One thing I'm really hoping now that Marvel has um, the rights to Predator, I'm really hoping they do a Predator vs. Wolverine comic. Because back in the day, Predator and Alien God, they crossed over with everything. They have There was a couple of different series like uh, Batman vs. Predator. I think Judge Dredd vs. a Predator. Or was it the Alien? So this guy got around. You know, This was a popular character to like <clears throat> throw into like fantasy battles with. And I'm really hoping they do Wolverine. Wolverine and the Predator, just, that's just like a match made in heaven. I'm hoping if they do that, they bring in the other Wolverine characters too, like Sabretooth. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've been losing my voice lately, so that's why I'm kind of coughing in these videos. Because I've been speaking a lot more than I normally do. And it's kind of taking its wear and tear on my voice. Right, there's the predator looking all cool I love the predator I think I've made that clear I, I would seriously honestly I'd love to just have a job drawing the predator so if there's anyone watching that can make that happen help me out <laughs> And if you notice, this drawing looks a little bit more detailed than some of my other drawings in the past. I think it's just because I love the character so much. I really want to put some time into this. Okay, this is moving a lot faster than I thought it would, to be honest, um, which is good. I don't want to get, like I said, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to get too carried away with this drawing. It's, it's this character. It's so easy to just like lose yourself in the details because there's so much going on here. But it's all worth it though, because the character it's just so detailed. That it's like anything you add to it, it's just this is gravy. You know, it's just gonna make it look better. Let's add one more whipping out. And 
And then let's, let's plan out his neck. Whoops. Oh, where's my dude? Where's my predator dude? So he kind of has this like ribbed collar around his neck. And I'm just going to add that. Okay, let's, um, details, details, details. So I'm going to add these rings around his neck. It's like a ribbed collar or something. I don't know what it is. One thing I got to remind myself is, like I said earlier, I was doing that one drawing of Fred the alien, and it's like <laughs> I had fun. I had fun drawing it, that experience, and just like rambling on about aliens and stuff. Because aliens, you know, for a while, those were something that was kind of near and dear to my heart when I was growing up. But then, you know, that kind of some of that drawing kind of defeated the purpose of why I'm doing this. Because I told myself that, you know, I want this to be a drawing exercise. All these drawings where each one gets progressively better than the last. And that Fred the Alien drawing guy is almost an embarrassment. <laughs> so it's like, I, I got to redeem myself and do something, you know, a little bit more heavy and that looks badass. So, I mean, that's why I'm doing this right now. I want this to look, I want this to look really sick. The Fred the Alien drawing, I think that was also this, it's like I said in the video, I think it, I was, at the time, like right now, during this whole pandemic and COVID era, um, I don't watch a whole lot of TV, but when I do lately, it's just weird stuff. Like, I watch a lot of Ghost Adventures, uh, Paranormal Cut on Camera. There's a lot of weird things. I think it's kind of, for me, an escapist kind of stuff, because especially now, there's too much reality going on, and with the way the state of the world and stuff, I just kind of want to be away from all the drama and the depressing news about like covid and the state of the world and the state of the country and you know so i've been i guess when i do watch tv i'm just kind of immersed in, in those kind of things because it's a very an, an escapist kind of thing and then when i drew fred the alien i think that was just a reflection of the fact that i've been watching a lot of stuff about the paranormal and the supernatural Alright, so I'm liking this so far. Um, this headpiece, the neck, everything is kind of <clears throat> everything's kind of gelling. So next time I have to go make a note. I should keep like a bottle of water next to me so when I'm doing these videos, I'm not coughing all the time. So I'm right now, what I'm doing, I'm just kind of adding a somewhat like a reflective texture on these. 
little jewelry bits on his dreadlocks. I'd like to think maybe these are kind of like or ornamental, kind of like more of a metallic finish. So I'm just kind of making them look a little bit reflective. Yeah, as I'm drawing this predator, I mean, this is more what I wanted to see in terms of my artwork um, when I share it on YouTube. I want to do stuff that looks, you know, looks quality. It looks like something I really put my time into and something I'm passionate about. I don't want to be one of those people that, I mean, nothing against them, but it's like I said, sometimes there's a lot of stuff on there that I'm probably going to be guilty of it, if, I, if not already, like this clickbaity kind of stuff. Like, I, I just don't want to draw something because it's hot at the moment. You know, I draw stuff that I'm really attached to and stuff I could talk about. And the quality of these aren't, it's like I said, these aren't how-to drawings by any means. I'm not sharing any details about like how, the, the hows and whys I, I do stuff because, I don't know, I mean, not that I don't want to share that kind of stuff, but I kind of think that as an artist, you just have to discover stuff for yourself. And what works for one person isn't always going to work for someone else. And it's important to define your own style. Like I was watching some American Idol earlier and there's some amazing, talented singers, but... You know they don't have they don't have their own identity you know they're really good at emulating or not i don't want to say impersonating because it's almost derogatory but you know they're very good at like mimicking or studying other musicians and singers and artists that the stuff that they put out isn't it's talented and it's gifted and they're using their their skills to, you know to the best of their abilities but their presentation it just comes off like you're just like mimicking what you kind of know and um, I think as an artist, it's important just to develop your own style and, you know, granted everything, you know, some of my, some of my stuff is going to be derivative of stuff I've learned from other artists, but I think for the most part, you know, after so many years, I've kind of developed um, a signature in the way my art looks. And I hope that for everybody, you know, I hope everyone can find something that makes their work look unique and defines them as an artist and as a person. All right, this is the this is the part that I always mess up. As soon as I start like getting aggro and erasing stuff, I end up tearing the page. But I like this drawing a lot, so I'm trying really, really hard not to mess it up. So how many Predator movies have there been? Okay, there was the original Predator movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger. There's Predator 2 with Danny Glover. There's AVP, the first Aliens vs. Predator. There's AVP 2. There's the Robert Rodriguez movie, Predators. And then there was a movie that came out maybe two, two, two and a half years ago. Um, that one's, that one's called just, I think it's just called The Predator. And I like all of them. I love the first one a lot because that introduced me to the character. The second one is good because it's, it kind of, the, the last like 10 minutes of the movie are, is amazing. Especially when they, when Danny Glover boards the ship. And then you kind of realize that this is a, you know, society of hunters that's been going on for a while. And then they showed the other Predators and then. On their trophy walls, the skull of an alien, a xenomorph from the Alien franchise. For me, that was like, that was like the greatest thing in the world when I was a kid. And I saw that, and I'm like, man, that is so cool. And I loved, I mean, I know some people didn't like the Aliens vs. Predator movies because they said they weren't violent enough or they weren't R-rated. And but even though know, for me, the the these monster movies, they're not always about the gore. You know, I'm, I'm more concerned about the mythos of the character and their stories and stuff. You know, I don't think the Predator sh or the alien should be viewed as these one-dimensional beings where it's just good for, like, a gore fest or something. All 
All right, this is the part that's going to worry me. This is the part where I have to come in and uh, start shading and rendering these tentacle things, which are is a nightmare. I'm going to light them from both sides. I think that'll be the easiest way for me to do this without making myself crazy. There's no fast way of doing this. You know, maybe if I was working on the computer, I could do this faster, but I'm not working on the computer, so. All right, so at this point, I think I want to give myself at the most 30 minutes to finish this up. I don't want to, I don't want this video going into like the two hour range. Not that I don't mind the long videos, but I got other stuff I got to do tonight. So I'm excited to see what Marvel Comics puts out in terms of their, their comic books. Um, I picked up the Alien comic. Um, I just started reading that. I didn't finish it yet. But, I mean, I was impressed so far. Um, it, it's like I said, it saddens me that I have to say goodbye to the Dark Horse stories. And I'm sure Marvel will reprint them. But, you know, Dark Horse was the home for these these characters for such a long time. And there's Marvel Star Wars stuff. It's good. I mean, there's been a lot of hits and misses. Um, some of the stories have been really, really good. Some of them have been not so memorable, and it's like, why bother with it? But, you know, the the creative directions they've taken has been, it's been pretty good. And I'm really hoping they can do the same with the aliens and the Predator. You know, these are always going to be some of my favorite characters. And they're, they're kind of a consistent in my life, too. You know, they're characters that... I mean, it's just like with superheroes. These are characters I grew up on, and the fact that they're st still enduring to this day says something about them. And for me, it's a chance to kind of... It's like an escape. I still get to relive my youth through their stories. I think that's why I've always been into comic books. Like, it's cool that stuff is so mainstream now, but growing up... I mean, I've talked about this in other videos. Growing up, you know, it was... Not that it was frowned upon, but it wasn't anything that was seen, you know, deemed as being cool. But they're so mainstream nowadays. It makes me... It, I always wonder, you know, I always feel like I was born... Um, was it? I used to tell people, I feel like I was born, I don't know, 10 years too early or 10 years too late, you know. Like, I would love to be a kid growing up, like nowadays with the way uh, stuff like fiction and all this pop culture media has been going because it's so cool that this stuff is so mainstream. But at the same time, I think I have a different appreciation for it because I grew up during a time when this stuff wasn't as mainstream as it is now, so I get to appreciate it, you know, on this different level, seeing it grow and being accepted. Yeah, I'm liking this drawing a lot. I mean, I'm just... If you if you compare this to some of my earlier videos, um, I'm this one I'm approaching a little bit more slower. Um, this is one's a real labor of love for me. I want to make sure that the final product really does the character justice and kind of encapsulate encapsulates my art style, so you get an idea of like you know how I normally operate. Because that this is kind of like that. I don't remember if it was Bebop or Rocksteady. One of those drawings, it was a little bit more refined than what I normally do. And that was kind of reflective of my normal art style. And this is kind of... This kind of going along those lines also. My stuff could get very detailed and very fine-lined.
So I'm looking. I'm really liking how these dreadlocks are coming out. So in my head right now, I'm kind of wondering: Do I go further once I'm done adding the black on them? Do I go further and add some shading to it, or do I call it quits? Because the hard thing with doing a drawing is that sometimes you have to know when to step away. Because there is a point when too much becomes too much, and I've seen that with some of the videos I've done already. Because I don't want to get too carried away with this, but at the same time, there's part of me that's like, you know, what if you keep on going? What if you keep on going? You know, how, how detailed can you get this to look? But I, I don't want to run the gamble of all of a sudden it, I just F it up. You know, it all takes is one line to mess things up, and you're like, oh my god. All right, this is looking nice. Yeah, I wish I could put more time into um, this drawing in general. It's so hard uh, balancing like work and um, everyday personal life and this making time for this. You know, in an ideal world, I'd love to be able to just commit myself to just drawing all the time. I just being creative. I love to write. I love to draw. And there was a period in my life when I, I really worked really so hard just to try to pursue that and make that happen. But, you know, for one reason or another, it didn't work out. And, you know, I kind of had to, like, get my feet back down on the ground and, um, you know, accept the facts and reality that I, this wasn't going to happen. And, you know, I had to get a real job and uh, um, do that. Which I was, just, I mean, I'm not that I'm, you know, I'm not rolling in, like, money or anything like that. But, you know... I think, I think for the most part, me just working a normal job, I've been successful with that. I've been employed by the same place for, I think, like 12 or 13 years. And I have the respect of my coworkers and stuff, which is important to me. And I've developed good work ethic, and I work really hard. But, you know, there's a part of me that I really wish that the art thing and the writing thing happened. And, you know, I could have made that my life. Um, it makes me sad sometimes, but, you know, you kind of just deal with what you're given. You know, it, that doesn't mean that it took my art away, but, I mean, for a good number of years, I kind of, like, just lost the fire of just being creative and doing things, and I got so caught up in this routine of this, you know, working a job, and I don't want to say rat race, because that's, I don't know, I think that's kind of stupid, but, you know, I just kind of got caught up in that, and, you know, I just... I just really wish I could just go back to how I was when I was younger and just just be so concerned with this creating these imaginary worlds and developing my craft as an artist and as a writer and as a creative being. You know, I'm very, very envious of people that got to make their dreams happen. Because I worked so hard to try to make something happen with my life, and it just—it would never, never. You know, I'm that. I'm like, my nickname is Charlie in real life, and that was given to me by my babysitter because she thought I looked like Charlie Brown. And it was one of those weird, almost like self-prophesizing kind of things because you know my whole life people just called me Charlie because I'm you know I was nicknamed after Charlie Brown, but I seem to take on all his characteristics. You know, I'm always I'm always coming up short. You know, it's like no matter how hard I work or how hard I try, it's come up short all the time. 
you know, whether it's with work, whether it's with my art, whether it's with opportunities or girls or something, it seems like I just always just fell short. It bums me out, but at the same time, I'm not going to let it deter me from trying still. You know, I believe that if I keep on trying at some point in time, things are going to pan out. And not that I'm going to get everything I ever wanted, but at least um, I'll be at a point where I'm like, okay, I achieved this and something kind of... You know, it's, like, it's kind of like vi being able to visualize something and have it come true. You know, if I can get something like that to happen. But right now, right now, it's just trying to figure out what the vision is, you know. But this outlet, doing these videos and drawing and stuff like that, it's providing me a creative outlet that allows me to uh, have a platform. You know, if, if people watch this, cool. I'm not necessarily about getting, all, like, viewers and becoming YouTube famous or anything like that. It's just... I have, I like being able to share my stuff with people in my life, and uh, especially nowadays with the the state of the world, with the pandemic and all that, I don't really get to see people, so I'm, I have no way of sharing my life with people outside of doing these kind of videos. So, you know, there's a handful of people in my life that watch these things regularly, and for that I'm very grateful, because it's, it's a way for me to connect with them, and... It just makes, it'll, I think it'll make things that much easier for when the world does come back to normal, that... Um, it'll feel like we never missed a beat because we got to stay in touch somehow. And for me, if I, if these videos is that kind of somehow, you know, I'm just going to keep on doing these. But I, li I would like also to think that maybe at some point in time, these could provide me with new opportunities to explore in my life. All right, so there's a predator right now. Do I go further with it? I'm going to say yes. I'm not going to get too crazy with it, but just enough where I could be I could tell myself that I took the gamble and I went just a little bit more than I should have done yeah I like that it, just adding a little bit of um, shade to it gives it a little bit more depth brings a little bit more life to it Back when I used to teach drawing classes, I always told my students that, you know, essentially you're just, you're just putting your, you're kind of just putting yourself on the paper. So I'm a firm believer that if you're very sincere about your craft and what you're doing, you're actually tra transposing a little bit of your soul into your work. And that's reflected, you know, on your canvas or paper. You know, this is essentially me. You know, every line kind of, every line is kind of like my story. I always told my students, like, if you're nervous and you draw a line, it's going to, sh that nervousness and that kind of energy is going to show in your line. If you're confident about what you're drawing and what you're creating, you know, that kind of confidence gets carried over into your work again, and you can feel that in your work. You can feel that energy in your line. Yeah, so right now I'm very, I'm really happy with this drawing right now where where it's at. If I could make every drawing look like this and feel like this, you know, for me that'd make this whole YouTube channel worthwhile. You know, I just love creating, I love drawing. There's just something so cool about taking a blank sheet of paper or a blank canvas and just creating something on it. Now, the artwork doesn't have to be perfect, it doesn't have to be beautiful, but it's just amazing that you could take nothing and create something. And then you kind of leave this mark there that's just going to always be there. You know, art's very powerful.
Okay, I'm liking that side a lot. Um, let's start fleshing this out a little. Originally, this YouTube thing wasn't even going to happen. Um, at first, I wanted to do a closed podcast. And it was it's closed in the sense that no one would really know about it except for like, um, I don't know, maybe like a handful of people. And it'd just be me rambling on about the stuff that I thought was funny. And then after I got, I started get, buying some of the equipment. I got the microphone. And then the apartment was kind of like, you know what, why don't you just do a YouTube? And I'm like, okay. So then I tried doing a YouTube with that, I think it was that Venom drawing. And then I kind of liked it because it it was kind of weird because it put me on the spot. Like, I'm granted, I'm not in front of a live audience when I'm drawing, but um, being able to perform in front of a camera on cue and, you know, just running the risk of making mistakes and, and just trying to pull off something like within a lot of short amount of time, that just really appealed to me. And I remember when I used to do comic book conventions and I'd, you know, I'd um, get, like, I'd like rent out a table and I'd, I'd like sell my artwork and I'd do commission work and I'd draw for people. I remember how excited some people were just, you know, for them, watching someone draw live was always kind of a treat for them. And then I know for some artists watching other people, some artists kind of struggle. They can't draw in front of other people. And then some people are just so slow and I'm kind of the opposite. I work really fast. And then for me to, like, to, to be able to perform in front of a camera and just be able to think on the fly and hopefully try not to make any mistakes, I love that kind of challenge. I remember I was once, this is, this is unrelated, but in some ways thematically it's kind of similar. I remember reading an interview with um, adult film star Jenna Jameson. I think it was Jenna Jameson. This was a long time ago, maybe like in the 90s or early 2000s. And then she was talking about how people would always come up to her and ask her, how do they get a job? in the adult entertainment industry and then she's like you got to be able to have sex in front of your friends you know if you could do that you could do it in front of a camera <laughs> so it's kind of like not that you know i don't know if it's the same thing or not but i feel like if i could draw in front of the camera on on the fly i could i could draw anything granted i'm not saying it's gonna what i'm gonna draw is gonna be good but you know, being able to have that kind of courage and develop the confidence in the drawing and stuff to do it, I don't know, live is just really cool to me. I'm not an artist who, any, like, corrects my artwork with, like, opaque white or, like, you know, I'm not a Photoshop artist who hit, goes back and hits the undo button, like, every five minutes or moves things around. Like, if I make a mistake, I just commit to it. And I think that's, not that this has my, been my philosophy in life, but, you know, I, I don't think that you you don't always have undos in your life. You know, you just, if you do something, you do it. And if it's good, good. If it's not, then just keep on going. All right, this is quickly becoming, I know I've said this before, but this, I really mean it with this one. This is, this is because it's the Predator and I love the Predator and I love the way this is coming out. This is becoming one of my favorite drawings I've done this year. I mean, not just for the YouTube stuff, but just in general. I really wish I could have the time to just devote and draw the actual full character as opposed to these portraits, but this is what you can get like in an hour or so.
Okay. Um, I think we're about... Did I miss anything? It doesn't look like it. So, uh, I think we're going to wrap things up. Yeah, so this is my predator. So, I took this guy. Bam! The predator. Arr! He's all crazy looking with his muscles and his lasers and fishnets and crazy crab face. So I took this guy because I love him and I drew a portrait of him right here. So this is my predator. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video and that you, you know, get something out of this. You know, whether it inspires you or just causes you to think about stuff or if, even if this is just an escape for a couple of minutes in your life. Um, you know, thanks for checking this out. If you know someone that likes drawing or dislikes this kind of stuff, you know, you know, feel free to share this. It's like I said, I'm not out to like become YouTube famous or get lots of subscribers, or whatever. But you know, I, if I could get more eyes on this, or even if I could just connect with new people, that'd be kind of cool. You know, I'm always looking to, uh, you know, make a new friend or two or whatever. So, um, once again, this is my predator. My name is Lou, and it's the 29th of March, 2021. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I love sharing these things with people. I love creating. I love drawing. And I hope you have a very wonderful day, and I will see you soon. Take care.